music scene. I'm your host, Stephanie DeGraw. Thanks for joining us. Today, I'm going to be talking with George T. Gregory, who is with us, and he's going to be talking about some new projects he's got going on. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. And tell us a little bit about your life history and how you came to be so involved in music. Uh, well, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I went to college there for music, Indiana, U <clears throat> Indiana University, Pennsylvania. Uh, after that, uh, U.S. Army Band. Um, after I left the military, um, I date myself if I tell people <laughs> when I was in the military. But uh, after that, um, I, I turned uh, completely professional when I came out of the military. Um, went be back and forth between the rock and the blues scenes. Um, had rock bands in New England. Also, I played with uh, James Cotton Blues Band from Chicago. Um, my, one of my bands also backed up John Lee Hooker when he was on the mm -hmm. East Coast. Um, I've appeared on stage with uh, everybody from B.B. King, Taj Mahal, Papa John Creech, uh, the Chambers Brothers. So, do you think the blues are more relevant today than they were before with the economy and some of those things going on, or what do you feel about the blues? Well, I, I think the blues are a lot more relevant than, than people realize of what, uh, where our music has come from. Where did rock and roll? There's an old statement, in fact, it's a line, I, I think it's from a Muddy Water song, called The Blues Had a Baby, and they call it rock and roll. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you listen to a lot of the great artists in this country, I mean, from Elvis and every, all the great, a lot of great musicians, the Rolling Stones, all of these bands were influenced by American blues. And blues, like those genres changed, blues has changed and kept pace. I mean, you listen to the Robert Cray's and the Keb Moe's, the more contemporary blues artists, they're still great storytellers. Um, and blues influences a lot of players. I mean, look at the John Mayer, all the modern players who, their influences, you can hear, I mean, you can hear uh, where they're coming from in their music. So I don't think the blues ever isn't relevant. It's the roots for what we do and then we add other components to maybe make it, I don't even know if I would say to make it have more appeal, it's just it's where we're coming from. So we get to add our own flavors like cooking a pot of gumbo. We, I'm going to put a little more saxophone in here where somebody else is going to put a little more guitar. I mean, I'm a saxophone player, I'm a singer, so my, my blues, my take on the blues is going to be a little more saxophone oriented. And I think the blues allows that. I want to uh, talk about your your project of re-releasing the music that you have and and let's go and talk about you know your projects right now okay uh, I have a CD that I recorded earlier in San Francisco uh, we're in the process I have a partner here Kelly Brown has Kelly Brown Productions uh, it is in the West Valley area has a studio which we're recording a new project and then remastering my old project. Right, so there's two projects you're working on. Right. Okay. And the reason is, um, is it now with the internet, uh, I'm opening a website and reopening my record label and I'm going to be able to release two products at almost the same time. What is the difference in your music though, uh, talking about the two projects and, and what are the names of the project? The first project is? The first project was called After Hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lived in San Francisco at the time, and actually the title song, After Hours, was written because I was one of the hosts of an After Hours jam session. Okay. There's probably similarities between the two projects. Uh, the difference, I think, mainly is that my new project is probably maybe a little less produced than the first one. Mm -hmm. um, so, so a new, different sound, maybe? Well, uh, plus in this one, I'm actually, the majority of the people that play on this CD are actually in my current band. Oh, okay. So you've got the past history and, and the current. Right, exactly. Okay. And this is the, uh, the new band, the band that I perform with here in Utah, and hopefully I'm going to take right. on the road. Uh, well, tell me some of the um, maybe challenges and also what you enjoy when you're in the studio. You've spent a lot of time in there lately with Kelly, and right. um, what are the things that are challenges, and then what are the things you really enjoy? Um, well, I mean, challenges, I don't know. People who haven't done studio work uh, right now are in the editing process, and editing can be a little boring. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a time-consuming process to really clean things up, to have it where it's really air quality, uh, ready to go. But mm -hmm. I like to work in the studio. I always have. Um, it's fun bringing musicians in, some who have a lot of experience, some not a lot of experience. And I've liked this project because Kelly and I have worked together, and we try to get people comfortable in the studio, wow. to try to get the yes. best playing out of them. And I think like with this project, 
I've tried to make it not just fit me, but to fit my band. Ah. So, I mean, there's going to be nice guitar solos on there. Um, I'm lucky enough to have an old friend of mine who uh, played with Ricky Lee Jones, Joe Cocker, Ray Charles, currently works with David Crosby. Um, he does guitar solos on two songs. And what I think is interesting is my guitar player. I mean, and Jeff is a great guitar player. Marty, when the solos on both guys have solos on the album, and everybody's solos sound great and, and stand up within the project. Excellent. So it's so really nice to work with those quality of people. Right. So that's and, great. Yeah. And the other people on the project, some with not a lot of experience, and some, you know, my bass player, Dan, has quite a bit of experience. And I mean, anybody that listens to it that knows how, anything about the bass guitar is going to hear that the bass tracks are great. Also, obviously, Kelly um, does a great work as a, as a keyboard player and also is a producer. He and I are co producing the project. Oh, okay. So he is the engineer. I mean, he will get production credit on it and is engineering it completely in his studio. And I'm just real happy with how hard everybody worked on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the backup vocals on um, where there are female backup vocals, it's Elaine Byrne from a, band, a local band in Park City called The Detonators. And. Uh, Ingrid Kopfheimer, I hope I get Ingrid's last name, <laughs> Kopfheimer, yeah. it's a big last name, and yeah. Ingrid and I worked together in another band called Sin City Soul. Okay. And actually the two girls had never sung together before, but I'd heard them both sing, I thought they had great voices, their voices are different, and I thought, well, that'll work in the studio, and so the three of us did all of uh, the big background vocals on the project. You've kind of seen the music industry change, and what are some of your thoughts um, for the musicians now who are trying to get out there and get their music heard? Oh, uh, just keep at it. Yeah. I mean, I've been out there, I've been back, I'm going to try to go back out again. Um, and just be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, get a music education. Don't, don't pigeonhole yourself. Uh -huh. Learn to play as good as you can play and keep growing. Don't, you know, don't shut yourself off from different forms of music. You have some other talents. What else have you been up to? <laughs> well, I teach, I teach skiing in the winter there at Deer Valley. I teach a guy <laughs> at Deer Valley. In fact, all the Utah mountains. I mean, because uh, there's, I'm a member of the PSIA, which is Professional Ski Insurance Association. And we can guide at any mountain. So I have clients that come to Deer Valley, but we may ski snowboard for the day or mm. like that. And in the summer, I'm the assistant manager and a golf professional at the homestead. In okay. Midway. Well, so, so you keep busy. We've really enjoyed having you here today. Yeah. And we've been talking to George T. Gregory on the music scene. I'm Stephanie DeGraw. Thanks for joining us.